Good morning, Knights. Mrs. Hackensmith again. Today is Wednesday, May 13th. Yesterday you were asked to do some um, inferencing on your reading packet, and I thought I would go over those. So let's take a look at the poster that talks to us about making an inference. Remember, an inference gives you clue, you, you take clues from the story or the text, whatever it is you're reading, you put it with what you already know about that, um, whatever you're reading about, whatever the topic is, and you come up with an inference, or you come up with an idea about what is going on that the author didn't tell you. So the author gives you clues, you put it with what you already know, and you come up with an idea. But the author did not specifically come out and tell you that information. Alrighty, so we're going to take a look at our sheet that we did yesterday. And the first one was called In the Night. And In the Night is a story about the animals that come out at night. And we read that mice do their roaming at night because it's harder for the foxes to hunt them in the dark. And we also read that when otters live near people, they are more active at night because that's when the people sleep is at night. And a dragonfly sheds its skin at night and it can take a few hours for its wings to grow strong and by morning the dragonfly is ready to fly away. So you were asked to write what was mostly true about this paragraph. Otters like to live near people yeah, that is what the story told us, but that wasn't an inference. It's safer for some animals at night. Okay, we, were learn we learned that a lot of animals did their things at night because it was safer for them because they weren't going to be eaten or they weren't going to be bothered by people. And wild animals have more fun at night. Well, it didn't really talk about them having fun. It talked more about them surviving. So B is your inference. It is safer for some animals at night. Using what you read from the story, putting it with what you know, and coming up with an answer or a conclusion. What happened? This was about a critter that came down from a tree and he had a mask on it looked like he was a masked animal. So you think about what you know about animals and which animal do you think wears a mask? Were you thinking of a raccoon? Okay, let's see. Um, he went over to the garbage can and he took the lid off and it clattered on the ground. We, we have plastic garbage cans now, but way back when they used to have aluminum uh, trash cans. It was a trash can made out of aluminum or a metal. So when you took the lid off, if it were to fall, it would make a big clanging noise. And it said when the animal disappeared, they saw a striped tail. And we know that raccoons have a striped tail. So the author did not come out and tell us it was a raccoon, but by the clues we read, we put it together with what we know about animals and we came up with a raccoon got into the garbage. And that was what the author was talking about. So I hope you got that one. And then you had two more on the back. And this one talks about getting the news from long ago. Um, there was a person called a town crier. And that person would yell out the news. And if something was really special in the news, he would beat on a drum or ring a bell and everybody would come running to the town crier to listen to the news. So we read through these, which one is most likely true? There were few ways to get news long ago. Now this was before they had invented the printing press and newspapers were being printed. So this was all before that happened. You just had to listen for the news guy, the, the town crier, to yell out any kind of news. But then they invented newspapers. And now we have the internet. So it, getting news has come a long way. The last one is called Helping Lena. 
And Lena woke up from a long nap and she had a lot of trouble sitting up. Mom came in with some juice, smoothed out her sheets and fluffed her pillow. And mom said, here, drink this, it's good for you. So from those clues, what did you infer? Did you infer that Lena is sick in bed at home? Mm hmm She wasn't in the hospital because her mom came in to help her feel better, right? And she just didn't have a nightmare. She wasn't scared. She was just feeling weak from being sick. So these were the inferences that you were supposed to make in your packet yesterday. Now, today we're going to learn about main idea. And we've talked about main idea before. The main idea is basically what is the story all about? So I'm going to move over to the book camera and we're going to take a look at some main idea and details. Okay, so I have a chart here that I borrowed from the internet called Main Idea and Supporting Details. And if you take a look at the flower pot, the flower pot says main idea. So the main idea, whoops, is what this text is mostly about. What is the whole thing all about? Or it can even be just a paragraph. What is the paragraph about? So after you figure out what the big general idea of the paragraph is, or the text, whatever you're reading, then there are details that support that main idea. So each one of these flowers is a detail that supports the main idea. It says details explain more about the main idea. Now, it's kind of hard to see this. Let me see if I bring it up here closer then you can see it. So oh, it just kind of gets blurry, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna leave it down here because it gets too blurry. So. From our flower pot here, the main idea says, there are many fun things to do during the winter. Okay, now that's the main idea. There are lots of fun things you can do during the winter. Now we're gonna talk about some of those different things that you can do during the winter. So this detail up here says, sledding down steep hills is fun. So one thing you can do in the winter is to go sledding down the hill. Another detail that supports the main idea, sometimes we have snowball fights with friends. So that is another detail, another thing you can do that makes um, fun things to do in the winter. So we can go sledding, we can have a snowball fight, and then the third detail is downhill skiing can be very challenging. You can go skiing and that's another fun thing you can do in the winter. So the main idea is the general big idea about what it's all about. And then you have your supporting details that describe or tell more about the main idea. It's kind of like when we make our hamburger and the main idea is the top bun, and then you have the hamburger beef, the cheese, the pickles, and you add all of those juicy details that support the main idea. So it's kind of like when we would make our hamburger when we would write um, our, our paragraph writing. So think about when we wrote our hamburgers. All right, so that's main idea. We're going to do a couple of main idea stories. We're going to do a couple examples together. And then you can go ahead and do the ones that are in your reading packet for today. So the first one we're going to do today is about the game Monopoly. Have you all played Monopoly before? Do you know where Monopoly came from? We're going to find out. It says, have you ever played Monopoly? This famous game was invented more than 70 years ago. Times were very hard then. Many people were out of work. Charles B. Darrow had lost his job too. He began designing games to earn money. 
One game was based on getting rich. For many people, the game was a dream of better times. It became one of the world's most famous games. Yeah, he created a pretty good one. If you've ever played Monopoly, it's a lot of fun to play. Alrighty, so let's take a look at our questions that go along with this story. The main idea of this paragraph is, so not the little details, but in general, what is the whole paragraph all about? How and why Monopoly began? Okay, that's, that's a pretty good one, but let's read the other ones just to be sure. The reason Darrow lost his job? Now we know that he lost his job, but that isn't what the whole paragraph was about. How to play the game of Monopoly? Did it tell us how to play the game? No, it didn't tell us how to play the game. It didn't tell us how he lost his job. It just said times were rough back then. But this whole paragraph tells us how and why Monopoly began. So the main idea of this paragraph is how Monopoly began. It began because a guy lost his job, he wanted to create money, so he designed this game. It was a, it was a dream of getting rich that many people had during that time, and the game became, became very popular. Okay, now we're gonna think about details. Remember the, de the main idea is the flower pot, or the top bun. Now the details are the flowers from our flower pot, or they're all of your juicy ingredients you put on your, your hamburger or your sandwich. So a detail that tells more about the main idea is what people liked about Monopoly, how many people could play the game, how much Monopoly cost. Now, did the story tell us how to play the game? No. Did it tell us how much the, the game cost? No. What did people like about the game? I think for many people, the game was a dream of better times. So it kind of let people forget about their problems that they were having. And it's kind of fun to have a dream of maybe making all that money. So I think people liked the game because of that dream. Tells why they liked the game. Mm -hmm. Another detail, the best title for this paragraph would be, so if you notice how it doesn't have a title up here. So if you had to put a title on it, what title would we give it? Meet Charles Darwood. Okay, remember he's the guy who made the game and they told us a little bit about his life. The Monopoly story. Okay, this is definitely about how Monopoly came to be. Popular board games. Yeah, Monopoly is a popular board game, but it's it says games. Does it tell us about different games? No, nope, just about the one game. And the one game is Monopoly. So I think, and I hope you thought so too, that the Monopoly story would be a good title for this for this uh, passage, for this paragraph. Alrighty, are you with me? Okay, I hope so. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do another one. Okay, so this one we see a couple of goats over here and again, it doesn't have a title. It says, goats help prevent fires in California. In parts of the state, the fall season is very dry. Hot winds blow over the land. The smallest spark can start a fire. The fire spread easily through grasses and bushes. So people use goats to eat the plants as a form of fire control. The goats eat anything, even plants with thorns. Many people rent the goats until the rains come and the danger is over. All right, so do you understand what's going on here? 
California is very hot and dry during the fall and they have a lot of grasses. So they rent these goats from a goat farmer. The goats go on the land and they eat down all of those grasses. And they don't care what they eat. If it's a thorny weed like a dandelion has thorns, they don't care. They just eat it. So they eat everything that is in that pasture or that area of land. And then if there were to be a fire, there isn't very much to burn because the goats have eaten it all, probably down to the ground. So that was pretty interesting. I didn't know about that. I learned something new. So think about the main idea of the paragraph. Goats are very fussy eaters. If you're a fussy eater, it means you only like to eat certain things. Are goats very fussy or will they eat anything? I think they'll eat anything. Goats prevent fires by clearing the land. Okay. California's dangerous dry season. Yeah, we did talk about the dangerous dry season, which was fall. Mm, which one do you think is more important? The dangerous dry season or the goats prevent fires by clearing the land? Yeah, I think the main idea is about the goats and the goats clearing the land to help prevent the forest fires. Or I guess not forest fires, but the, but the grass fires. Okay, now we're going to talk about the details. A detail that tells more about the main idea of the goats preventing fires would be the goats are rented for the dry season. Cows do not work well for this job. Goats also eat plants people want to keep. Now, we didn't talk about the cows. And we know that the goats eat plants that people would want to keep, but the big idea is to get the goats out there to clear the land so that the fire won't start if there's a fire. So which one do you think is the best? Yeah, I think the goats are rented for the dry season. That is a detail. And we found that up here in our story. Where did it say that? <laughs> goats eat anything. Many people rent the goats. Okay? So that was one detail that supports goats prevent forest fires. So the best title for this paragraph would be California Fire Safety, Goats as Firefighters, the problems of fall. Hmm, any of those could be a good title for this paragraph, but which one do you think would be the best? I think the goats as firefighters, what, what they're doing is they are preventing the fires, aren't they? So they are fire preventers. They are out there gobbling up all the grasses so that the fire can't even start. All right, so that is main idea and detail. And today, our matrix says, complete pages five and six in your reading packet and upload to Seesaw if you can. All right, so you have two stories to read. Here's page five, looks like we got Arthur here. So you're going to find the main idea and you're going to find a detail and the best title for the story, just like we did with ours, that we did together. And then page six is, hmm, I don't know what this one's about. Oh, it's about a palindrome. You're gonna learn about palindromes. Level, did, taught, those are examples of palindromes. So you're gonna learn what a palindrome is. All right, so you are going to find the main idea, find the detail, and then find a good title for this paragraph. And then upload these to Seesaw if you are able to, and I can check them over. All right, have fun with those. Okay, next in our matrix, math. 
Here we go. It says, do independent practice numbers 4 through 12 on pages 595 and 596 in your math packet. Complete the right math at the bottom of the page. Alrighty, so here is my page, 595, and then you're going to do 596. Okay, now this one is independent practice, so you are going to do it by yourself. Alright, now you don't have the handy dandy clock like I do. We have these at school. So, if your minute hand, which is the long hand, is pointing directly at the 12, and the hour hand, which is your short hand, is pointing directly at the 6, the hour hand tells you the hour. So it is 6, and if the minute hand is directly pointing at the 12, no minutes after 6. It is exactly 6 o'clock. Alrighty. So whatever number that hour hand is pointing to is the hour. And if the minute hand is directly at the 12, there are no minutes after the hour. So this would be 8 o'clock. Alrighty. Now... On this page, you are going to tell me what time the, the analog clock says. You're going to write it on the digital clock. Remember, the hour goes over here on the left, the minutes to the right, and then you're going to tell me what time is on the clock. Now, down here at the bottom, you have to show the time on the analog clock and the digital clock. Now I am very picky about this. The minute hand is the long hand and it goes all the way to the number. The hour hand is the short hand. It only goes to the number. Notice how the minute hand goes through the number but the hour hand goes to the number. So I'm gonna do the first one with you. It says five o'clock. Now, if it is five o'clock, there are no minutes after the hour. So that tells us that the minute hand is directly on the 12. Straight up 12 o'clock. Notice how my arrow goes through the number 12. And then five o'clock, that is the hour hand. The hour hand is the short one. It goes to the number, but it does not go through the number. And so on the digital clock, we write the five like that. I'm very, very, very picky. It's really important that you have a sharp pencil to make these hands. If you've got a dull pencil, you can't be as precise. So make sure you get your pencil sharpened. Alrighty, on the next page, let's take a look at the problem solving. Okay, show the time on each clock. So here's the analog clock where you're going to have to make the arms. Colin gets home at 3 o'clock. Evan gets home one hour later. What time does Evan get home? All right, so Colin is three o'clock. So I have a little clock here and I'm just gonna show you three o'clock. So there is three o'clock. Now if Evan gets home one hour later, remember how you were supposed to think of that clock as the number line? Okay. So if it is one hour later, then three o'clock, here's three o'clock. If it's one hour later, what time does Evan get home? So if this is one hour later, do 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 goes around one hour, you're just going to go to the next number on the clock. So after three o'clock comes four o'clock. Mm-hmm. So you're going to draw four o'clock 
on the analog clock. All right, number 11. Baseball practice starts at 4 o'clock. Mark eats a snack two hours before practice. What time does Mark eat a snack? So go back up here to the, to the number line. So if, um, if basketball practice starts at 4 and Mark eats a snack two hours before, that means earlier, one hour, two hours before, what time did Mark eat his snack? So here's 4 o'clock. So you go backwards, one hour, two hours. So if he ate his snack two hours before four o'clock, this is when he ate his snack. Write it on the digital clock. Okay, so it's like a number line. You can go before the hour, which would mean to go backwards, or after the hour, would mean to go to the right on the number line. Your numbers are in order. So this is like a rounded number line, okay? But you could flatten it out. Okay, let's look at the Brain Builder. It is four hours before 12 o'clock. What time is it if it is exactly on the hour? Show the time on the clock. So, you can also put 12 o'clock in your head, and you can count, if it's before, you're going to count backwards. It's before 12 o'clock. So, you can count backwards four hours. So, everybody, to put 12 o'clock in your head, and let's count back four hours. Ready? 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. So four hours before 12 o'clock would be eight o'clock. So here's my 12 o'clock, okay? I'm gonna go back one hour, makes it 11. Two hours before, makes it 10 o'clock. Three hours before, makes it nine o'clock. And four hours before makes it eight o'clock okay so you're going to draw that with the hands on the analog clock all right now your right map what time is it when the hour hand is on five so the hour hand is on five and the minute hand is on the twelve and then how do you know? So what time is it when the hour hand, the hour hand is the short hand, okay? So the hour hand, hour hand is the short one. And the minute hand is the long hand. So if you need to, draw a clock and then tell me, how do you know that that's what time it is? All right, so this is your assignment for math today. Do your main idea in your details, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.